Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I'm here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're going to talk about Sonic, but not really. We're going to talk about Sonic, Star Wars, and all the other franchises that Hollywood continues to strip mine. Mm -hmm. That they're banking on nostalgia, but they deliver, a lot of times they deliver very little nostalgia. And now we've got this think piece from the BBC. The BBC, the the uh, folks behind Doctor Who. Yeah, we want, I have some comments. Talking about fan entitlement. Mm -hmm. Very, very long-winded article full of a lot of inaccuracies. Uh, Which is surprising for the BBC. Usually everybody says go to the BBC because they're usually more accurate. Well, because the BBC has some skin in this game because Doctor Who has been under the microscope with fandom lately. Well, because it's been failing and tanking and its uh, yeah. ratings suck. Yeah, so they put this out yesterday and they're basically talking about they, they start out like well okay we will give the fans this we'll we'll give them the benefit of a doubt and then by the time you get about halfway through the article you realize that the whole purpose of the article is to paint fans out to be a bunch of homophobic misogynist racist of course horrible they people. are we bring up kelly tran we bring up the last jedi and now we're talking about sonic the hedgehog because how very dare you how very dare you change something to please an existing fandom because all they'll do is turn on you and and drive people off of instagram because you know clearly you're supposed to just take whatever bowl of crap they give you and say thank you i love it please sir can i have some more exactly that's what you're supposed to do because that's what you're gonna say about birds of prey that you need to get out there and support this movie says who i don't have to support anything i don't want to support and it's, it might be not it might be a good movie i don't know it's not my kind of movie at all so i'm not going to go see it sorry all right, so before we get into it, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. We're at almost 100,000 subs, guys. Thank you for the support. So let's talk about this article. It is very, very long-winded, and I love how they do this. They always do this. They always start off these, these think pieces, and they're not actually think pieces. They're, they're thinly veiled attacks. Uh, disguised as think pieces they always start off with you know well here's here are the facts and the fans have a right to feel this way and whatever but they don't and then by the time you get to the end of it it's usually some ranting about misogyny and trump i was like trump usually <laughs> russian bots and i don't think trump is actually mentioned in this article it is british they probably mentioned brexit though but it it does follow the pattern and the whole purpose of this is to and I know why they do it. They're like, look, I'm clearly not biased. Let me give my objective opinion at the beginning. And once I've got you hooked, then I'm going to, I'm going to slam my bias. I'm going to slam you with my bias. I'm going to twist that hook right into your side and make sure I get my digs in. Cause I got the right people reading this just to make sure that uh, everybody knows how awful fans. Well, that's actually right. So are. we're going to get our digs in right back. So yeah, there so you go. The redesign of the new big screen Sonic in response to fan backlash shows how many... How people power is now shaping pop culture. How people power! People power. That's what they're calling it. People power is now shaping pop culture. Oh my God. Yeah, so they talk about the change of Sonic. They said in the words of Jeff Fowler, this wouldn't have been possible without the fans. And then they talk about uh, how they brought back Sherlock Holmes because fans were outraged when he, you know, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle killed off uh, Sherlock Holmes. They talk about Game of Thrones and the petition to fix series eight because it was awful. Yeah, but you know what? A lot is besides the fans. A lot of it is because they, the companies want to make money. Yeah. I'm just, you know, at the end of the day, they need to make money. Yeah, so this is this is what they're afraid of. This is what we talked about in other Sonic videos, and this is this is what everybody's afraid of. The unprecedented decision to redesign Sonic, to surrender so transparently to audience wishes, represents something of a landmark moment in the modern relationship between artist and fan. Thanks to the connective power of the internet and a changing media landscape, it's never been so influential, so vocal, and some would argue so entitled. Yeah, that's what they argue. Should fans have this much of a say in pop culture? If you want to make money, the answer is yes. I mean, I get it. You know, we we have our own stories and things too. And mm -hmm. people get very passionate about the way I think things should go. And you know what? That's an, it's an individual decision on something like that, whether or not you want to do what the fans want or you want to tell your own story. But when it comes to something like what they showed for Sonic, it was so bad that no matter what political, you know, bias you had, everybody unanimously said, this looks like garbage. Yeah, and this is there's a huge difference here too. And they talk about the depth of creativity because the fans are dictating everything. The the biggest difference here is we're talking about established 
properties with established exactly. worlds and established fandoms. We're not talking about brand new stuff, you know, stories that haven't been told yet, characters that haven't been created yeah, yet. That exists out there in the world somewhere. Uh, I wish somewhere. Lolly would, would catch on to that again. Uh, they talk about the MCU being more participatory, participatory. Talk about textbook studies of of uh, all of the you know fan fiction and how uh, Fifty Shades of Grey was Twilight fan fiction became a big hit. Uh, how Star Trek fandom influenced uh, Star Trek and how they're pissing off the Star Trek fans. It goes on and on and on. Until it's we a get, very wordy article. It is until we get back to this point, and this is the whole purpose of the article: when the fans bite. When back. the fans bite back. When the fans bite back, you don't make any money. It's it's as easy as that. You can sum it up to that. Yeah, so they, they're basically talking about the sense of ownership. Uh, they're talking about Veronica Mars, but they also did a Kickstarter for Veronica Mars. They did. You know, and the fans backed it. So, yeah, I think in that case, you know, people are going to have a little more um, ownership. But we go down, we talk about Game of Thrones and the position, and we talk about 2017's Oh, God, here we go. Star Wars The Last Jedi. So the Game of Thrones petition and The Last Jedi, both of which, in what is surely not a coincidence, were continuations of stories that did not involve their original creators mm -hmm. and instead were overseen by professional writers who were fans whose authority to tell those stories could be questioned. Well, it was questioned because their choices were not good. I'm sorry, they weren't. Yeah, so the former was straightforward. The last series of Game of Thrones... Uh, was garbage, and they said they had over a million oh. signatures for HBO to remake. Okay, wait. So basically what's probably going on is the author himself did not like the the Game of Thrones. So that's okay. That makes sense. We saw this with uh, the Mary Sue. The Mary Sue. Because yeah. you're you're allowed to have your opinions about fandoms and be mad and say what you want to say as long as it was something they agreed with. They hated the Game of Thrones and the way it went down. So it was okay to be passionate as a fan and, and be invested as a fan then. But then they throw shade at any other fans for any other fandoms like The Last Jedi or whatever because how dare they? And that's exactly what's happening here. Guaranteed. And again, this is another uh, lie that has been... Oh, the vocal minority? Yes. This has been spread so now we've got these uh armchair scholars mm -hmm. picking up the lie and parroting the lie as if it is is a truth vocal minority of star wars fans despise the last jedi so much they clogged the internet for months with abuse especially directed at but that's, not what happened. that's not what happened the last jedi furor however was a bit more complicated directed by ryan johnson Second in the latest Star Wars trilogy. Okay, this is where I really get pissed off. The second in the latest Star Wars trilogy was a film that aspired to show the stylistically bold and thematically challenging filmmaking was still possible within the constraints of a franchise. Which is going to make it fail right there. You cannot take something that's established with an established fandom and change it that much and disrespect it that much. You cannot do it. Critics Including and, this person, guaranteed. I know, right? Many critics and fans adored it, but the vocal minority, mm -mm, aghast... It was the majority. The things would not have tanked. Go ahead. Aghast, aghast at, at the rejection of nostalgia. That's what you're calling it, okay? Yeah, of inherited power. The idea that an older Luke Skywalker would not be more complex than a leveled up video game character despised it so much they clogged the internet for months with vitriol and abuse. It wasn't for months, and it, it wasn't this way. Okay, you know what I love? I love the shippers for Rise of Skywalker sent death threats to the actor, you know, to Adam Driver's family, to J.J. Uh, Abrams and all that. That's, you know, vitriol and abuse. Because there's always going to be a small... There, could it happen? Yes. There's always a small percentage in any group that might go too far. That is not indicative of the entire group. Just like all the shippers aren't bad because some shippers went too far. And again, it's everybody's fault. If you don't like it, if you're one of those people, you are vitriol and abuse. Even though you might not have done anything of the sort, you're going to be labeled that because you didn't like it. And here is the lie repeated again. Kelly Marie Tran, whose character Rose, they especially disliked, even ended up leaving social media altogether due to sustained harassment. If they repeat it enough, it becomes the truth. Apparently. And so in a crate, this is, this is what got me. And so, in a craven capitulation to the worst impulses of modern fandom, J.J. Abrams followed Johnson's film with The Rise of Skywalker, a desperate and creatively bankrupt barrage of fan service, which will forever serve as a reminder of the difference between giving fans what they want versus giving them what they need. Oh, okay, oh, 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 hell no. First of all, 
Uh, the reason Star Wars fell off an effing cliff was because of The Last Jedi. The Last Jedi, it wasn't a vocal minority. It was the vast majority. And because people didn't like it, and I know a lot of people who aren't even on Twitter didn't like it. And guess what? They aren't all straight white men either. I know, shocking, right? And they didn't like it. So when it came time for Solo, it bombed because no one went because they were going to talk with their wallets. When it came time for, you know, other things to go down, and when Rise of Skywalker came, people were so fucking fed up. Sorry, I swear. They were so effing fed up with it. They didn't go. And basically, Disney went and tried to undo what ruined it was the pacing and everything because they tried to shove two movies into one movie to undo the crap that Ryan Johnson, who himself was on the internet, trolling fans constantly to keep this shit drummed up, which you uh, never mentioned that in these articles. Nope. Going around trolling fans, literally calling them names. Even the ones who supported him, he was mocking. Yeah. And then you never mention that. It's always everybody else's fault. Never mind what all was done on the opposite side that led to people being so upset. I'm so tired of these pompous, head up their ass people who think that they know everything and it's the same damn story every time. You're not even creative enough to come up with your own new reasons. You just pair it back what people said using larger words to act like that makes you somehow morally and intellectually superior to everyone else. Not true. It's the BBC. It's the BBC. Uh, yeah, so... Look, they couldn't fix Star Wars with the Rise of Skywalker. It was impossible. It was already done. It was putting a little Hello Kitty Band-Aid on a gaping flesh wound. Mm -hmm. You already killed Luke. You already killed Han. Carrie Fisher was gone in real life. The end of that movie pretty much wrapped everything up. Yeah. You had to undo things and, and make up new things to have new things to wrap up for another movie. I mean, it was it was clearly not well planned out. No. I mean, the whole thing was a cluster, and then what was getting fans back was The Mandalorian, because you know what? It feels more like the original trilogy. And this is a load of shit. Don't give fans what they want. You know what? Great advice. Fantastic advice, BBC. Don't give fans what they want. Don't give readers what they want. You know what's going to happen? You're not going to have a job, because no one's going to read your stuff, and they're not going to be any money, so you're going to have no job. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. So, okay, they hit all the bullet points. Like I said, they start this off the first, like, 10 or 12 paragraphs. Hey, guys. Hey, fam. Hey, fellow kids. Middle of the road. And then we we basically tick off every ridiculous cliche bullet oh, point. Oh, it is. It's like there's, like, a list that they're sharing with each other. Yeah, 2016 female-led Ghostbusters reboot. Oh, God, reboot. are you serious? It gets better. Oh, it gets God. better. In which the TV and film industry's push for diversity and inclusion has been met with vicious campaigns. That's not what happened. Of racism and misogyny. I, you know what? I'm a woman. I'm so tired of these men telling me how I'm supposed to feel as a woman and telling me because I don't like these movies. I'm racist and misogynistic. I am so effing sick of it. You don't get to sit there and mansplain me. I am. You go on about how men shouldn't treat women like shit and then you do it. Because women like me don't count unless we agree with what you have to say, which is even worse. That is somehow even worse about you being, a, 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 you talk about misogynists and men with their heads up their asses. That makes you worse because you're not even listening to women who disagree with you. You just don't even, you have to they're on you. They're, they're in person. They're not even real in your mind. Ghostbusters, the reason that one failed was because nobody wanted it. No. They didn't, they didn't need another Ghostbusters movie. Everybody, that was the biggest complaint I heard was, who wanted this? Nobody wanted it. And then the next thing was, it wasn't about telling a good story. It wasn't about having good characters. No, no, from the beginning, it was the same thing that I keep complaining about over and over again. It was about making them women. There's the the movie. It's women are the women rule and men drool because every guy in that movie is either an idiot or an asshat. And, and, and they're all there to keep the women down. I'm a woman and I'm sick of this lazy ass storytelling. There are plenty of strong female characters out there that are good characters. Those characters were not it. They were literally just gender bent versions because uh, women. Because. Shield, women's shield. I'm tired of being used as a shield. I am tired of, because I have boobs, of being used as a shield. Racism and misogyny and fandom isn't a new phenomenon, explains Suzanne Scott. It's just being felt more acutely in recent decades, in part because of the ease of which these attacks can be orchestrated on social media. No, it's because social media are run by these people who are so far left that if you don't agree with everything they say, you're somehow an alt-right Yahtzee and you're racist. Oh, we get there. We get there. Just wait. Oh, he goes there too? Yes. Oh, God, you couldn't even... I could Every just... bullet point. Look how psychic I am, people. I haven't even read this. Every bullet point. Just bear with me you, you, here. This is like a 
cliche. This is this like is, a, a parody of the of the media right now. This is the most cliche article ever. Some of the issue here is that the misconception that science fiction and fantasy fandoms have long been a preserve for straight white men when they have been some of the most diverse fan bases okay. of the genre. Hold on. How many of you on listening to the show are straight white men? How many of you aren't aren't straight, aren't white, or aren't male? Well, that's what she's saying. She's actually saying that uh, there's a misconception that that uh, that it's only been straight white men. It but, is a misconception. But straight white men have basically had had a death grip on the characters. Bullshit. So some of the toxicity is definitely a small percentage of white straight male fans conflating mainstreaming with a forced diversification when that diversity has always been there. Diversity, and we've mentioned that many times. It's always been diverse. Yeah, but we're now we're using that. Now we're using diversity as a weapon against. Well, we're just do we're just representing the fandom. Uh, more more fairly and uh, you know so shut shut up. People have zero issue with the fandom being represented more accurately, and the people most often have zero issue with diversity. The problem becomes when the movie is about diversity and not about a good story that happens to have diverse characters, which is what we keep seeing, which is what we keep complaining about. Um, I know a lot of people are like are offended too because they're not white and they're like. I like a white character and I don't think that you have to tell me that I, I, I have to not like them because I'm not white. Just like, I, you shouldn't have to like a character based on any of these check marks, these boxes. It should just be based on, are they a good character? If they're a good character and it's a good story, people are gonna like it, it doesn't matter. They keep forcing this diversity issue that wasn't even there. I'm so sick of it. Well, we're gonna keep beating this drum. So here we go. So she's basically like, look, you know, the, the fandoms have always been diverse. They just oh, want to see. God, they're going to drop name drop Gamergate. I, I, yeah, you beat oh, me to God. it. Oh, you ruined the punchline. You ruined the punchline. I still love you. I still love you. I'm sorry. What makes things even more complex, however, is how these backlashes against the changing face of pop culture tend to feed the wider cultural war between conservatives and progressives. Okay. Holy God. So they're making it a political thing. Yes. It hasn't been a political. This whole political bullshit has only been the last few years that it's gotten this bad. Because of Gamergate. Here, it has long <laughs> been argued, for instance, that the 2014 controversy Gamergate, oh God. which, if, again, this is not what happened. No, which, it's not. Which involved harassment campaigns against women and minorities in the video game industry. No, it was about gamers taking back the video game industry from trash journalists like this one mm -hmm. who constantly made up bullshit and lies to make the entire gaming industry, all the gamers look like alt-right right. Nazis. It's, a, it's the same what we're seeing in the media today. It's all about to get clicks. It's about baiting people and pitting people against each other that might not normally be against each other and making up shit that isn't there. There might be a tiny percent of a, like a kernel of truth in there in the middle that there might be some people, like in the thousands of people, maybe 10 of them are actually out there being bad people. But don't you know that ten pe those 10 people represent everyone that disagrees with you and that we're going to pit those against each other and that's what you got for here. So don't don't you know, according to, to the BBC journalist, Gamergate laid the groundwork for the alt-right who themselves have found fertile ground amongst men angry at black stormtroopers and female ghostbusters. That's not what fucking happened. You dumbass. Are you even paying any attention to what people are actually saying? No, they're not. Nobody was pissed off wow, about you're, that. You're actually scaring me now. No, I'm just like I cannot believe this is this is. The, I mean, is this guy actually like a a, an alt right Yahtzee being a parody of an SJW? No, or something? it's because they literally all the same talking points. Every time they disagree with you, it's the same points. It doesn't matter how many times it's been proven wrong. Doesn't matter. They just they they're like a list because I heard someone so say it. that's that's what's going on. I don't actually bother fact checking my own shit. I'm just gonna boom 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 say it because everybody else is saying. It's all this whole article is all the lies that have been passed around by these journalists for the last four or five years. All of them in one place. This is a panic article because they're losing their grip, and that's what this whole thing's about. This right here. This is what this is about yeah. because it's coming from the BC, BBC. So read this and they get it at the very, very end. Okay. Meanwhile, right-wing newspapers in the UK launder negative fan opinions of the current storylines of Doctor Who to support their own agendas against wokeness. You know why Doctor Who is tanking? Because the audience doesn't like it because it's a bunch of bullshit right now. Right. And then they'll be like, we can't, we gave the fans, we want to be brought back some of the old villains. You've hired writers who, did you say they're soap opera writers? You've hired- They're not even science they're not, fiction they're writers. They're not science fiction writers. The show has is garbage. I won't even watch it anymore. And I'm your target demographic. 
it's dumb. It's a dumb show now. And your your ratings are tanking. You cannot say that your ratings are tanking that hard just because of a vocal minority. Your ratings don't tank that hard unless you piss everybody off. Sorry, that's reality. When you want to deal with reality again, let everybody else know. Because right now, you are the vocal minority. Yeah, and the media has tried to control the fandom. They've tried to control the narrative. Look at what the whole purpose of this article is. Those whiny Gamergate alt-right Yahtzee types. Who hate women like the Ghostbusters, who hate Star Wars. Who hate women and black stormtroopers. Those horrible people got the studios to cave and change Sonic the Hedgehog. You know what's gonna happen? The studios are gonna start listening to these nasty, nasty fans and we won't get the kind of entertainment that we think. That's exactly. Uh, getting. And you know what? What's wrong with balance? That's what I don't understand. That you know what? That's what we're for. We're for balance. I don't think you should go too far either way. There is a place where you can meet in the middle and you can probably appease the most people. And that's what these studios should do. Um, when it came to Sonic, everybody was yelling about it. It didn't matter if you were, you know, were left or right or whatever, because you know not every country in the world is votes left and right. Left or right or whatever. Um, everybody universally hated it. So they made changes. It wasn't about politics. It was about, it looked like shit. And as far as this is concerned, this basically, this whole article is because they're pissed that Doctor Who's failing. Yeah. Because they have gone so far with their agenda. It's, it's, it's not even good anymore, guys. It's so far. It, it's not even good stories. Even diehard fans are turning on now because of the uh, the retcon doctor. They're like, what the hell is up with that? And uh, they last, retconning a lot of things. Last week's episode where the doctor is was a raging bitch to Graham. Graham's like, hey, doc, I'm worried about my cancer coming back. And the doctor's like, yeah, I would say something nice, but I can't think of anything right now. Bye. Well, you're a man. You're problematic. So Yeah. I mean, look. The show's ratings are in the gutter, not because of the toxic man babies, but because the general public doesn't give a shit. They're pissed off. And you know what? If somebody throws us a bone like Sonic the Hedgehog every once in a while, hell yeah, we're going to support it. We're going to support it because nobody's listening. Mm -hmm. They're not listening. You keep pushing. And the thing is, is that if you want to tell different... No, their heads are so far on their own asses. They can't hear anything but their own asses. They just hear their own flatulence. That's all that's, they hear. That's what they hear. And these journalists, journalists like you were the problem. This is what kicked off Gamergate. This is what kicked off the culture wars. It was people like you who got the megaphones who were basically news. I affair. am a journalist. I am on the BBC. I am the more authority. I am the tastemaker. You are going to listen to what I say. Frankly, fake geek girls and boys pretending to be part of the scene who were not actually part of the scene who decided they were going to come in and commandeer things, change everything to their liking to, to make a political statement and or it's whatever. blowing up in their faces. Yeah. And now they're, Hollywood's starting to take notice. These places are taking notice. Like, oh shit, we want to stay in business. We want to stay in business. We're going to have to find a, a middle ground that works for everyone so we can bring our audiences back. And that's what they're trying to do. And I will not go against any company who will do what they can for the fandom. Yeah, because, you know, the fans were the ones who paid the bills all those years. You know, where the hell were you? You were at some university getting a useless degree to get out to go. Well, right, sitting here mansplaining to women like me yeah. about what we, you know, because don't. I'm, that's what I'm mad about. I'm so tired. So tired of these men sitting there in these writing these articles talking about straight white men and misogyny and all this other stuff. And then it's like they, they mansplain to women constantly. And then they, while they're saying they're, 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 you know, they're, they're championing women. No, you're not. You're mansplaining to women. And if women don't agree with you, you just basically call it, just associate them with all the man babies and step over them, and which is even doubly insulting. They'd be like, I don't agree with somebody because they're different skin color than me. So I just completely step over them and, you know, and, and ignore them. Like they aren't there. Yeah. That's worse. It's always the uh, alt-right Yahtzees, the man babies, mm -hmm. the whatever. Misogynist, the racist. Because, you know, if you don't like a TV show, it means you're a misogynist racist. If you don't think we need another Ghostbusters, because we really didn't, you're a misogynist, racist, you know, sexist pig. If you didn't like, you know, the way Sonic looked and the car the way they animated him, you're clearly a misogynist racist. Meanwhile, I want to point out, it's almost like they're blaming the newspapers for Doctor Who's failure. Meanwhile, I want to point out that Doctor Who is failing phenomenally. Like, they had they had to try this hard to fail. It dropped from being an all-time series high when Jodie Whittaker debuted to dropping down below Peter Capaldi's average in the span of a season and a half. It's failing miserably. 
But Sonic the Hedgehog is going to make bank. Mm -hmm. You know, and you know what? If the BBC were smart, they'd get their heads out of their asses with their hat in their hand and go back to what worked and actually attempt to make the fans happy instead of constantly attacking them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, get rid of these freaking journos. Go find something else. Find Get a real job. Go do something yeah. else. All right. So we're going to wrap this one up. Yeah. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. We'll talk later. Bye. Hey, guys. Thanks for watching Clownfish TV. Please consider supporting the channel. Go to clownfishsupport.com. That's clownfishsupport.com. And if you want to join our community, go to clownfishtalk.com. That's clownfishtalk.com. Please subscribe. Ring the bell for notifications. We will talk to you next time.